Good evening, LVC. Let's give God some praise in this place. Amen and amen. So good to see you. Thanks for coming out. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, y'all. Thank y'all. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> just, say, just say thank you. Just thank thank you. you for tuning in. <laughs> thank you for being out there. It's all good. Angel is in the building. What's going on? Well, it's good to see Carol and town and April. I feel like I'm doing the romper room and I see OJ and Dijon. You have to get the magic mirror. That's old school. You don't you know, you know about the <laughs> magic mirror. I see and Jerry. I used to sit in front of the TV Jerry when I was too. a kid every day looking for my name to be called. And there's nobody in the world I named Dwayne. I see Dwayne and Matt and Pastor Dwayne. There was a Matt, there was, there was always a Matt, there was always a Bill or a Billy, mm -hmm. there was never a Dwayne, ever. No, <laughs> or an Ozier. No no <laughs> Ain't no gonna be no Ozier. Or an Ozier, or a Jovan. You know? No, there's some Carols. <laughs> I remember when we would travel, I would travel with my dad going like up and down the road and we would stop at rest stops and then have the little key rings with the names on them and I yep. would look for my name. Never was there a Dwayne and if there was, it was spelled D-U-A-N-E. It was spelled wrong. Uh -huh. Spelled wrong. Never there was my name. <laughs> yes. But doing good, you know, it's a day. It was a day. Yes. I'm looking forward to the weekend because we have the grandkids coming and that's going to be some big time in it. Yes. In the 104 degree. Mm-hmm. So come over and go swimming. 104. <laughs> 104. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, good. Doing good. Pastor Matt is in the building. Yes, sir. What's going on, sir? His purple. Oh, man, it's great. You, you, you're you still like, you know, ho having hope for the Lakers with the purple tonight? Is that what no, you're doing? No, no, no. This is just, this is is just the Kings? loosely fitting clothes for the summer. Just I need something light and airy. <laughs> like a linen. <laughs> I need something that'll catch every little tiny breeze. Yes. So yes. I'm just I'm 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 testing this for when we go to to summer camp because summer camp in Arizona is going to be hot. I want to know what can survive the heat. Yes, summer camp in what what city in Arizona? We'll be in Prescott, so we'll be in the mountains. It okay. won't be yeah, we won't be in we won't be in Tempe. It's okay. not going to be 180 right. I was going to say Phoenix or Tempe. Yeah, you're, Phoenix, you're Tempe, all that area. We're not going to be around there. Okay. Yeah, no, we'll be in the mountains. Okay, all right. So that's not too it bad. It won't be too bad. It'll be what 80s maybe. It'd be it'd be 80s. It might, it might catch 90s a few days, and, and 90s in the mountains is never any fun. Cause but it'll cool down at night, right? But it will. Okay. That it will. Okay. And we, we may catch a summer storm. You never know. Summer Hopefully. storms in Arizona are awesome. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. That's right. Yeah. That's that's monsoon time. Arizona has monsoons. Yep. <laughs> and monsoons are no joke. So we, we have uh, Angel's cousin, but we have a cousin who lived in, in Arizona. I can't remember... I can't remember the city they lived in, Crystal, and they lived in Arizona, and she said one time, it was, it was their first year living there, her husband was a doctor, and, and so they were doing their thing, and there was a monsoon, it was their first monsoon, and her car got hit by lightning. <laughs> so she said the, so there was all these little, like, like these little pin needle size holes like through the roof and her hood of her car and the seats, and you had all these burn holes in the seats, it was crazy. Yeah, it does Car not got mess around. Struck by lightning. Like you think you've been in rain, and I'm and I'm sure it's never. I've never been to the East Coast or or down south. I'm I'm sure that their storms get worse. Mm -hmm. But because I'm a California boy, yeah, that that was like when I my first experience in in the summertime in Arizona. I was like, whoa, this is these are real storms. Yeah, this that's is real. not a California rain. No, nah, I'm cool here. I'll take an earthquake every now and then, any day. Yeah, <laughs> and people yeah. who come here are terrified of earthquakes. So how we doing? How we doing in the chat? What's going on? Who we got? I should ask the people. All right, you got to ask the people. That's all right. Got right. to stay ready. Got to stay ready. Just know we have one person, Princess Lala. She Lala. Says, Hello, LBC. What's going on, Lala? Hello, Lala. Good to have you tonight. All right, everybody in the house, how y'all doing? Thumbs up. I'm good. Thumbs in the middle. Eh, thumbs down. Pray for me. Which one? How you doing? Let's see them. Let's see them. Let's see them. All right. All right. All right. Very cool. Good to see y'all. All right, so let's go ahead and pray, and then we will do our announcement thing and all that. So let's go. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for being who you are to us all the time. Thank you for being the constant in our lives when things seem to ebb and flow so much. And Lord, we just thank you for, for giving us an opportunity to be together, to learn together, to grow together. We pray that you are all in this space right now. Holy Spirit, fill us and fill this space. Fill the airwaves. Fill every device and every heart that's connected to the device watching tonight. And whenever they tune in, I pray that they get a fresh 
word, fresh manna, fresh inspiration, fresh anointed uh, word coming from you. Lord, we pray that you will be glorified. Jesus, we pray that you will be lifted up. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, take out your cell phones. You know how we do. Say hello to someone somewhere. If you're out there, you can say hello to someone in here or somewhere else and just take a moment to say hello. And in the meantime, I will make a few announcements. Saturday, this Saturday, from 10 to 2, Summit Bible College is having a leadership seminar, and um, it's the first one since the pandemic, and they invited me to be their first speaker, their first teacher. So I will be teaching in the seminar. So it's 10 to 2. I'm doing the 10 to 12 portion. So I'll do the first part. If you want to come out, there's the address. It's on the screen. Come on out. Um, and it is at Summit Bible College. And if you've never been to Summit Bible College, it's not like a like massive major university type thing. It's a, it's a smaller space, but they have so much impact um, through that place. It's just unbelievable what they do. So come on out. Be blessed uh, this Saturday, 10 to 2. Um, and my topic is going to be, what's my topic? God, my Jesus. Topic is, my topic is high impact leadership. High impact leadership. That's my topic. Okay. And I'll be teaching on it. So it's not a two hour lecture. I'm not preaching or anything like that, but I'm going to be teaching. We're going to do some activities. We're going to do some stuff to get engaged and walk away with some tools. Amen. Uh, Victory Kids, workers meeting this Sunday, immediately following service in the kids' room. Yeah. Yes. All right. In the kids' room. So anyone interested in working with the kids? And you might say, but I don't like children. That's fine. You don't have to. Well, we'll work on that. We'll pray about that. But, but if, even if you don't feel like working with kids is your gift, you can clean up the room. You can bring snacks. You can pray for people. You can invite other people. You can yeah. say, hey, I can be an administrator, and I can organize the schedule of who's teaching, and I can reach out and invite other people to come help, and I can do that. There are lots of things that can be done for this ministry, so come on out and support if you want that, and they'll have a meeting this Sunday. Anything else you want to add to that? No. Nope. I'm going right. to jump real quick on it, though, yes. because I, w I will say, if you've never served in kids' ministry, try it. Because you also don't, you never know. You never know what might be in you. Mm -hmm. Everybody should be serving in the church somewhere, mm -hmm. and you never know what might be in you. We had somebody that was serving in the, on the welcome team. They served in every other space because they were hospitable or because they were this or they, they were that. They served in kids one time, and she ended up, you know, after a few months, she ended up leading the kids space wow and she didn't even know that she had a passion for that mm -hmm. but she just fell in love with the ministry and so yep. i would say if, if you're not serving anywhere or, or whatever like just try it try yep. serving kids one time i'm yeah, glad you said really that good. because the kids bless you honestly and they're so funny and they'll pray and we do prayer time and those little kids will give a it's just a blessing so we're only, we're only asking for once a month for one hour because we do not want people missing church so if anybody has that heart, say, I can do one hour, once a month registration or cleanup or actually assisting the teacher just once a month, one hour to pour. So That's just, just basically what I'm asking is for people to come out and love the kids and you will be blessed if you do. Amen. Yes, absolutely. And thank you also for saying, uh, talking about serving somewhere. Everybody, it's time to, as we're reconnecting, reconnecting to our faith and coming back. If you're not serving somewhere, please plug in somewhere. Because we, we, are, we are rebuilding, we need yeah. you, we need your gifts, so, so jump in. Can, Angel, can you remember the first church ministry you served in, ever? Hmm. Um, I'm thinking it was evangelism going door-to-door -door at in Fremont. That was the first ever I that you so. ever served in. Mm -hmm. So door to door. And yeah, we had a, a door to door thing. They thought we were Jehovah's Witnesses. That was a hard one. <laughs> and we did a thing. They went out to the neighborhood, knocked on the doors, prayed for people, got the door closed in your face half that the time. That was a hard and, one. And another third of the time, or, or was, there's half, and then there's another 25% of the time, you got uh, people would kind of peek through the window and not answer the door. And then 25% of the time, somebody would open the door and say, what do you want, and whatever. So... That was that was uh, that was good stuff. What was your very first ministry? Very first ministry in? was um, was uh, the choir. I said I said I want to I want to oh, sing. Oh, I did that too. I forgot. And they said, uh, okay, well, if you want to sing, you don't just get a microphone. You need to show yourself faithful for a year and and be in the wow. choir risers. And so I was in the risers for about nine months. Wow. Uh, yeah. 
You couldn't just show up and start singing, huh? Nope. They were, well, that was not our church. That was not how they played. That was not a missionary <laughs> Baptist church. That was not church. missionary that's, Baptist. The like, youth no, choir you got to get up there, but we had a ball. <laughs> and I'm not putting down the missionary Baptist church, but the missionary Baptist church, that's a point of evangelism and outreach. It's like if, if you if you want to do any, just come on in and sing with us. Oh, my goodness. Because that means you're going to come to church. That means you'll be there and you're going to hear a word. And you have yeah. to sit still and listen to the word while you're in, Where in we the, really? Yeah. That, that was <laughs> well there's there's something beautiful and pure about that because I think yeah. everybody I know two two of my most favorite worshipers ever it were, were in our youth group and they were two two young ladies and that neither one of them could carry a tune to save their lives and they always wanted to stand right just right and there was no stage right in front of me and they were off key as all get out but man they, they were their worship was pure and so mm-hmm. it was beautiful and but but I've, I've been in a couple of services you know where where mics were muted. Uh, and then people were turned down and just be just going ahead and worship. Yeah, you know, I don't so think you know that, funny, I don't think the Jada... choir was for worship. I mean, not that way, but it no. was for fun. We just you mean youth choir? The youth choir right. in high school was just simply for fun, and we would go to we would go to Magic Mountain. For I the think bus that's trip. the I think that's the purpose you made for. No, it. I'm no, not sure if that's no, no. I know all the kids. Did. I'm telling you, Daddy knows. <laughs> I'm not and, sure if I would ask Pastor Tolliver. Well, that no, was the we purpose. had a ball, and it's funny because I shouldn't say it, but like we they were playing Mary Jane on the bus ride up. I didn't know. And the whole group is going, and mom was new to church, and where she's like, well, I don't know. So she's a, she's a youth advisor. I mean, it was just like, what? Yeah. And then the back. one song that stuck with me was, I'm looking for a miracle, and I expect the impossible. Yeah. And that's a great song, but it was like those words stay with me. So yeah. there was there's something good came out of it. Yeah. No, that's really good. So the first ministry that I served in was the, this is going to take y'all back, the tape ministry. Oh, yeah. The tape. That's how old you are. The tape ministry. Mm-hmm. I said, yep, so went to, went to church, and I said, I want to get involved. They said, hey, we need help with the tape ministry, and what they would, that was when they gave out, or when they sold cassette tapes, and they had this little whole contraption that would copy so many the tapes. On. Uh-huh. They had the master yep. tape, and I would put the labels on and put them in the thing and sit at the table and sell them, and I was so, I was so proud of that moment, but I always worked with youth, and so they said, you work with youth, and you're good at it? Come on back. We need you with the youth. And, and I was passionate. I loved the youth, right? I went back too. there. But, I mean, I worked with youth, like, in rec centers and all that. Right. And I was very worldly. He was very new so, to Christ. So, so, so I was brand new. I'm, like, coming into the youth ministry. They said, we need drivers to the Carmen concert. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> we need drivers. So, so I, I drove. I drove one of the vans. And you got in my car, and I had Public Enemy, I had mm-hmm. some Ice Cube going, I had, and they, and everybody was like, "Oh, we want to ride with you," and I was blasting it. And you took him to see Satan by Carmen. the dust. No, no, that was the one movie you took him to see. No, no, that, oh. no, that was the Carmen concert. And then our our youth ministry was pop. They loved us. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. we would talk real, and we would talk God, but we were so, like, off kilter. Yeah, it was off. Right? We were still, you know, one foot in the world. So we, went, we had movie night, and we saw Above the Rim when it first came out yeah. at the movie theater. What's the trip is the parents let us because they trusted us. They were like, our kids are having fun, so let them go. But, yes, if I, had, if I could do That's that all over movie. again, that would be a little bit. But different. you know what? To, just so you, know, so you know, you're not that off because the pastor took, you know, the whole church went and saw Coming to America. Uncut. Uncut. And the Coming to church. America is we an R-rated movie laughing. with a whole Didn't lot of know stuff how in inappropriate it. that was. <laughs> yes! I saw it again, uncut, and I was like, yeah. like F-bombs and the neck. I was like, oh. Didn't even yeah. know. I just, yay, pastor. Right. It was a young, <laughs> the pastor was only 27, right? He was 27 years old at that time. He was 28, time. I think. Yeah, he was young. Yeah, he was a young dude. And so we were all young, and we're all That's college students. And <laughs> All right, let me get through the rest of these. I got chat. Church, church oh, picnic, go uh, Saturday, June 18th, church picnic. That's coming up. It's a week after this Saturday. Oh, so yeah. church picnic coming up. Come on out. Bring friends, family, whatever. Come and hang out. It's at 9 o'clock. And as soon as it starts getting too hot, we're leaving. And we have breakfast. So there you go. There it is. And we're going to have breakfast laid out for you and the whole thing. So, so just come on out and hang out. Uh, Tuesday, July 5th is the next MVP. How'd it go? So we had MVP this past Tuesday. Today is Thursday, just Tuesday. We had MVP, and it was cool. You got some thumbs up in, in the room who were there. We had a good time, had some good food. The brothers. Hung out. Yep, so it was good being back together. So thanks, brothers who came out. We had a really good time and, and got to reconnect and, and all that. Javon, do you have a mic over there? Yes. Oh, Javon is in the building. 
We got the kingdom activist in the house. Good to see you, sir. Um, All right, so Tuesday, July 5th. Last announcement is Sunday, August 2nd is the next connection class. We had a connection class Sunday um, in Angel's office, packed room with one family (laughs) that packed the room. I'm not even lying. It was one family, and it was all the cousins and all all of it, just this one big family, but it was really good and had a really good time. So the next connection class, Sunday, August 2nd. Um, So if you're interested, you can check that out. All right, chat. Okay, we got Mama Dina. She says, good evening, everyone. Hello. Hey, Mama Dina. Dina. Uh, Christopher Rabb. What? What's up? (laughs) He says, good evening, LVC fam. I see you, Chris. Um, Andrea, Dre Love. She says, um, hello, Familia. Hey, Dre. Uh, Brother Jerry, Deacon Johnson in the back. He says, good evening. Deacon Johnson. We got Alicia Faith out in Diego. What? And San Diego is representing. She says, hey, family. And we have Brother Emil. From, and he says, hello, LVC. Emil, good to, good to EC you, sir. All right, thank you for tuning in, and thank you for being here. All right, here we go. Here's the question. And by the way, you're, you're not able to see the slides if you're, if you're watching virtually. Uh, we're having a, a, a technical thing going on oh with some of our things, but um, it has nothing to do with the team. It's with the equipment. Oh so this, this is the one time we can blame the equipment. Yep. <laughs> so, oh, my. So, yeah, so we, you're not going to be able to see the slides or anything, so I'll communicate them to you. Here's the question of the night. Two questions, actually. What is one of your greatest achievements? One of. I know there's so many, but what, what is one of your greatest achievements, and who inspired you to achieve it? What is one of your greatest achievements, and who inspired you to achieve it? All right, so I'll give you a second to think about that while the um, imaginary Jeopardy music plays in the air. Mm -hmm. And everybody can now think of the Jeopardy music right now. Angel, thoughts? Well, this is a hard one because my son's back there. But I would say being a mom has been a great achievement, not the best mom, but one that keeps trying to grow. and the ones who inspired me to achieve it were my, uh, my grandmother and my mother. That's the best job I've ever had, um, and with a lot of mistakes. But um, it's, they're, you know, they're amazing. That's the greatest achievement. Yes, our kids are amazing. Yeah. Yes, and Jared is back there doing his thing, holding it down, and he's amazing. Yep. Y'all have no idea how amazing Jared is. He's just amazing because his name is Jared. <laughs> Yes. Pastor Matt. It's difficult because it's difficult to, to speak about oneself, uh, right? But I, I was actually going to lean that same way for different reasons. I mean, our, our kids uh, are amazing kids. We have no business having such good kids <laughs> based upon the kind of children that we were. Uh, but uh, my inspiration to be a father, I wanted to be a father from the time I was three, four years old. They have video of me when I was three years old. When they asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, a daddy. And uh, the inspiration for that was actually my father because I wanted to be the opposite mm. of my father. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to be a good dad and I wanted to love my children. I wanted to hug on them and kiss them and, and encourage them. And I wanted to be that for them. And, and so uh, also not perfect, but, you know, nobody is. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, you know, as a youth pastor, I would always tell the students, hey, listen, man, you know, you need to go easy on your parents just as I tell your parents, hey, it's their first time being kids. Hey, kids, you need to go easy on you. It's their first time being parents too. Mm-hmm. Well, no, then I, got a, I got a big brother. Okay, well, it's their first time having two. Right. Or it's their first time having three. Like you, you need to, everybody's figuring this out together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, the, the inspiration was from a very, a, a much darker place. <laughs> right, um, but right. but uh, yeah, that, I would say that. Mm. Very and then good. being the shortest kid on, the, on on every basketball team I was ever on, that was... That was a pretty good achievement. Yeah, it is. Okay. So now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reframe the question. I'm going to ask it again. Oh. Right? I'm going to ask it again. We didn't ask so it. Let me, so let me, right. no, because I didn't set it up right. Yeah, Matt, so, we didn't do it right, Matt. No, y'all did great. Y'all did wonderfully. I, did, I, I didn't set it up right. <laughs> so your greatest achievement, and let's just assume that we all love our families, that all right. we all love our children. If we want to make that, assumptions. That we all love Jesus. Sure. Let's, let's assume that sure. we all love Jesus. So take the whole Jesus We love out. our children. Got we it. love our parents. We yeah. love our... So, so we, we, love, we love that family, all that. Okay. Let's, let's just assume that. Let's assume that, you know, all those things are all taken care of. Got it. So I'll ask it again. What is one of your greatest achievements or accomplishments, and who inspired you to achieve it? 
Jovan, you have a mic. Get on the mic and do what you like. I'm too humble. I'm too humble, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. When you say, when you say, when you say that, that is like the opposite. Of the yeah, too, yeah. The greatest way, achievement is being humble. Yeah, I'm way, way too humble. I kill it. What, what can I say? Okay. Um, <laughs> dang. I mean, that is a, that's a tough one to be asking somebody. I, I don't know. Just uh, one. Just pick all right, one. All right, all right, all right, all right. Anyone. Uh, Doesn't even have to be a big deal. Anyone. Uh, just pick from the many. You know what? I was not supposed to graduate from high school on time. Okay. I was so bad, and I kept getting mad. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Matt's like, because I, I was there. there. <laughs> I was so bad, and I was getting kicked out back and forth to go to Sacramento. And I was coming back and forth so much that I ruined my credits. And mm. I was going to school up there in Sac and coming back um, to the Valley and going to school out there in Wasco. And then I went back to Sac. I did it like a couple times. I messed up my credits and I almost didn't graduate. I almost didn't go to grad night. I almost didn't get to like be a part of it at the last minute. I hustled my mm. butt off because I didn't want to, it was so embarrassing like yeah. to not graduate. It's like, man. So I did it and I grinded it out and I got to do it. And nice. Yeah, I learned my lesson. Very cool. That was a good one. That was a good one. That, nah, that's good. Good stuff. Anybody else in the audience, you want to share just your greatest achievement or accomplishment? Anybody want to share? And I'll say it. Or anybody in the back? Yeah, Devin, Jared. One of them. Not one of them. Jerry. Not the greatest. I don't want you to rank it. Oh, April needs a mic. We need another mic. Thank you, Carol. Carol's going to get another mic, too. I'll share. All right. So I went through an academy, and this was the Corrections Academy in Arizona. And um, at the time, I was going through a divorce. And they called me up one day and said, we need you to be there on Monday and if you want this job. And I went. And everything happened to line up just right for this. Um, my mom took my kids. My ex didn't fight her. <laughs> um, I was able to make it down on Monday morning and do a nine-week academy. And I remember at one point thinking, I'm not going to make it through this physically. Um, I had been training to go in the Army at the time, and I was running about a mile, mile and a half a day. And it came down to the last run, and one of my classmates saw me struggling on my last lap. I have asthma. We're in uh, Tucson, Arizona. Mm. Mm -hmm. And... He came up beside me. He had already finished minutes before me. He came up beside me and said, you watch my back and you pace me. You're doing this for your kids. You're doing this for your family. You're mm -hmm. going to finish this. And he came up in front of me, and he caught onto my pace, and he just kept pushing me just a little bit harder Love it. and a little bit harder and a little bit harder. And then when he got close to the end, the last stretch, he just stood on the sideline and said, run, run, run. Go as fast as you can. And mind you, I was sick afterwards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I made my time. Wow. wow. Very cool. And I couldn't have done it. Yeah. I could not have done it without somebody right there. That is so good. Seeing what I was doing yep. and pushing me. Encouraging you. Yep. That's so good. No, that's, that is really, really good. Really good. Pastor Matt. I, uh, in all honesty, um, com coming from the background that I, that I came from uh, and... Uh, including you, you're, you, you did say, I know, you know, we love Jesus and all this stuff, take all that out of it. But, but it took, it, I had to go through a six years essentially of a, of seminary, uh, to get my ordination. Uh, and that was, I was, I think 20, 23 at the time mm -hmm. when I started, um, and then went through all of that and, and was able to finish that before I was 30. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that was, that was really, really cool coming from not knowing God at all my whole life. And then at 18 years old and then at 21 deciding like, okay, I need to be in ministry. I'm called to ministry. What do I do next? And then just, just, you know, grinding it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's good stuff. And I would say, I would say for, for me, similar line, I had a number, a, a number of things. I was like, okay, do I go this way or that way? Um, but I have to say, so I, you know, I went to college, got my bachelor's degree, but by grace, I graduated. And I'm not just being churchy right now. I'm serious because I, I, I 
I was not supposed to graduate. I was having way too much fun in college. I had to make up a bunch of stuff. I got kicked out, got back in. Carol, be quiet, because I know we live, we from San Jose. We, we, we were in the San Jose area, and you know all my people, so don't tell them, because they didn't know. But I, I got kicked out of school, did all that, whatever, got back in, and I had one professor in my senior year who allowed me to register for two classes, and he gave me two A's, and I never went to class. And that's what got me a 2.01 GPA so I could graduate with a bachelor's degree. Mm. So that's not an accomplishment. That was grace. And then I went to grad school. I went to grad school, San Jose State, to get my master's degree. I started, and I started halfway through a semester, and I dropped out. And then all of those grades turned to Fs because I just dropped in the middle of the semester because I didn't care anymore. And then I wanted to go to seminary. And they got my transcripts from that school and said, nope, you can't get in. I was one of the only people to ever get rejected from seminary, <laughs> right? So, so, I had to go back, <laughs> so I had to go back to San Jose and beg and plead. And God's grace, they said, you know what? Every professor said, you know what? Just write me a paper, I'll give you a grade. Or just do this and I'll give you a grade. Just yeah. back to back. Just grace was all. So I didn't achieve that. I didn't earn that. That was all grace. Seminary, Fuller Theological Seminary, I get there move my whole family. Angel leaves her job at San Jose State. I left my job. We went there, uprooted everything to go to this wonderful spiritual experience. I go to my first class, and it was Greek. And I took that class. And I'm not a good student, by the way. And I'm not just, like, being self-deprecating. I'm telling you, seriously. I have He's to work really, I'm, like, really, really hard. It takes me to work. Struggles. And so, so I went to that class on day one. And after day one, some of you heard me tell this story. After day one, Fuller had a prayer garden, beautiful prayer garden. I went into the prayer garden and fell on the ground and cried like a baby because I'm like, I am not going to make it through this. I'm going to fail every class. I didn't understand it. I didn't get it. Greek was literally like Greek. I have no idea what this is going on. Yeah. And I, I said, I'm, I moved my family out here. I'm going to fail. I'm going to have to drop out. It was just over. Well, by the end of that semester, I got straight A's which I've never gotten in my life, as I went back in the prayer garden and cried again, like, Lord Jesus, you're so good. But I, I made it through that process, and that was the first time I started and finished a program from beginning to end without, like, failing classes or dropping out or doing any of that, and I worked really, 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 really hard for the first time. So that was, that was an accomplishment. And I have to say, one person who helped me stay in, I know I mentioned this person's name before, but it was Pastor Tyree Tolliver. <laughs> it was. He was one of my mentors, and I would call him through my experience, and I would talk to him, and, and he was like, just hang in there, hang in there. Reverend, that's what he called me, Reverend, just hang in there. And I said, all right, and I wanted to drop out. I was like, Pastor Tolliver, I don't want to make it. He was like, you'll make it, just hang in there. Mm. And, so it, and so that was one of his voices. I can still hear it now. That was really cool. Chat. Okay, let's see. Uh, Mama Dina says, raising four Christ-loving children, attaining three college degrees. Wow. There you go. And then she said, too late. So she said, too late, I think, to you saying uh, not the Jesus thing. I'm not sure. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Alicia uh -huh. says, in my short lifetime, one of my greatest achievements has been being the very first in my family as a foster youth to not only graduate from a four-year university, but complete a piece of that degree in a foreign country and learned a foreign language. Yes. And you go, just, Alicia. And I'll just add for me on that, the other question the other way. Um, even though it's still Jesus-related, was beauty school. Yes. Um, because, and you're the one, again, thinking about what April was saying, that who was there helping along, that was you, but just creating a curriculum for junior high and high school girls to do beauty school, redefining what beauty and love is. And so that was a big thing to do on the campus and to teach the uh, mind, body, and spirit curriculum on helping women under young women understand their identity in Christ. Yeah. That, was, that was big. That was me. really cool. Mm -hmm. All right, is that it for the chat? That's it. All right, here we go. Okay, so topic for tonight is achieve it. Can everybody say achieve it? Achieve it. Achieve it. So we're going to talk about three stages of achieving ultimate peace. Because in all of our accomplish and accomplishments, achievements, and all of that, yep. we forget peace. Mm. So we can accomplish the whole world. And I won't, I won't say lose our souls because, you, know, you know, we're believers in here and all that. Um, but, but I'll say we can accomplish all kinds of accomplishments and lose ourselves. Yeah, we can good. lose our identity. Mm -hmm. um, with the, a lot of the academic achievement, achievements that I was on and in my career climbing and all that, I was like losing my family and didn't even know it. 
had no idea until they told me. My son and my daughter and my, my wife told me in a, in a counseling session. They told me. And it was like, I thought I was doing good. I thought I was like rock star dad. I thought I was like attending everything and doing everything. It's like, dude, you're so missing it. You don't even know. It's like, you're not absent physically, but you're not here emotionally. You're not here, you're not here mentally. You're not, you're not with us, and you're here, but you're not here. Y'all know what I'm talking about? But, but the yeah. achievements were there, and it's like, wow, you're doing yeah. so great, yeah. and you're doing so wonderful. And when it comes down to the things that matter, you're really not. But this, is, this, is, this particular message really, really struck me, and, and it's like, do, do, we, do we seek to, yes, accomplish things and maximize why we're here on this earth, but do we seek to achieve peace? In that alone, what are some of your reactions? Well, I yeah. think, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, I, just, I, I don't know. I just think that we think that peace comes through all this stuff. Yep. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't even think we care about peace. I almost would say that um, many people would choose the stuff over peace mm. because the stuff or the status at least shows that I have some worth and value because look at my list and look at my resume. Right. And I don't right. care that I don't have peace because I feel better about myself that I showed people or I showed the world, look at what I can do. Right. Even if I don't have peace. Right. So I almost think people are, most many people, Christian or not, aren't even looking for peace. And I, I think of the phrase, I'll rest when I'm dead and things like that. Yeah. It's like, I need to keep driving. I got to keep going and yeah. keep going. It's yeah. not for peace. You're yeah. not looking for peace. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I think that, um, I think that the majority of humanity are, um, are in pursuit of, of happiness or pleasure, uh, and, and not realizing, um, the, one of the greatest lessons and uh, of, of, you know, the apostle, Paul, who, who learned to be content, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we, we don't consider contentment uh, an achievement. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we consider that um, oh, there's almost a there's almost like a, a devaluing of contentment. Absolutely. 100%. Because we we view it as uh, settling. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or giving up. Complacency. Uh, complacency. Complacency. Apathy. Yep. yep. Um, but but it is yeah it's it's quite the achievement. And I think right. And I like I like in the text where he says I've learned the secret. Yeah. Of yeah. being content. Right. Because it, it it you know everybody can't get it. it's hard. It's, it's not hard a to default. Achieve. Well, yeah. and I I think when you say that too though it makes me think of um, you know Michael Todd's whole series on being cuffed, mm -hmm. being cuffed to all this stuff. And one of the things that um, when you take peace out of it. There are, there are some of us who are cuffed to comfort and we're cuffed mm. to pleasure. And so we may not look, be looking for peace, but we are looking for our selfish satisfaction in whatever it is. So it's almost like that mindset of, I just want to, I just want to just finish my job. I want to finish everything and then live on the beach. Mm -hmm. It's like your mindset is just that you're not focused on the kingdom. You're not focused on, you're focused on yourself completely about what you can do for yourself to be. So it's interesting. I don't necessarily want peace as much as I want convenience and comfort and luxuries and status. Right. I mean, it's all those things, but the pe true peace, there's people who are on vacation all the time and they don't have peace in their spirit. Yep. Right. Yep. Because it's not, it's, that's not what's going to do it. Yep. Right. I think Javon, you and I were talking about that, just going and I'm going to, this vacation, I'm going to go do this and that, and you still don't have peace. Right. Because it, the minute the vacation's over, you're wrestling again. Yep, so that's back like, on the ground. Right. So your circumstances are dictating everything about you. Right, right, right. That's good. Javon, anything? I just so a lot of people interpret how's your peace as how's your life. Mm. And when you ask people how's their peace, well, then they start telling you about how their life's going. Okay. Son's acting crazy. A car broke down. Mm. Um, they interpret peace um, based on Status. present circumstances. Mm hmm um, and then the absence of adverse circumstances means that everything's good. I'm peaceful. I'm just chilling. Right. Um, and then that's not the biblical definition. It's the peace that surpasses all, all cognitive yes. ability or yeah. understanding. So it, it's good to be able to have a sense of peace when God provides it regardless of the circumstance. Yep. And I think that's a real achievement. That to, is good. to have peace in that. It doesn't mean that you're not bothered by what's going on. It just means that you're, your soul is you're firm. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really good. All right, so Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. Anything in the chat? Did I miss the chat? Um, uh, Alicia says, I think we sometimes 
forget that we even hate the ability to choose peace. We say we want it, but expect it to fall out of the sky. Mm, that's good. Yeah. That's good stuff. All right, Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. It's just one verse that's richly packed. All right, Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. This is the Apostle Paul writing this letter to the church at Philippi, and this church was a giving church. This church was doing the things that they were supposed to do. This was not a letter of rebuke at all. This is, this is, this is, in fact, this was a letter, it was a thank you letter, right? It was a thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for all you're doing. Now let me give you some words of encouragement, right? And so here, here's one piece pulled out, one word of encouragement. It says this in verse 9, whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Isn't it interesting how we can like read like a, like you know through the Bible in a year and verses of the day and we go through all that and, th and we take something like this and then we can we can almost forget about it and almost forget that we read it and so so what does this say whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me put into practice and the God of peace will be with you so the topic again is achieve it three stages of achieving ultimate peace here's stage number one and this is done in stages. You, you, can't, you can't get to stage three until you've had stages one and two, and, and you don't leave stages one and two. They all have to be working together to achieve stage three. Does that make sense, what I just said? Mm -hmm. All right, so here we go. Here's stage one. Stage one is the baseline. Stage one is the foundation. Stage one is possession. Can everybody say possession? possession. All right, possession. It says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me. Okay, I'm going to show you a picture. Now, you, you who are watching online, you won't be able to see the picture, so you'll have to just bear with us for a moment. But it's a picture of, of two individuals, a father and son, uh, holding each other's shoulders. Um, who, can, you, can you guess who this picture is? I can't see it. <laughs> Jovan thinks it's, 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 no. it's two people on the water, like, like fishing. They're on a boat together, hanging out, smiling, taking He's a picture actor, together. Right? <laughs> and, and Javon thinks it's Wally and the Beeb. No, no, it's not. Wally and the Beeb were. No, that's no. I don't know no. who that is, but I recognize the guy. It's an old I, picture. I don't know who it is, but the older one looks like Joel Osteen. <laughs> the older one looks like Joel Osteen. That's funny. Oh, it is Joel Osteen. It's, it's, it's Joel Osteen yeah, and, his and his dad. Oh, is it? <laughs> that is a picture of that Joel, Joel and John that's some good Osteen. Eyes. <laughs> yes. That's a father, father son picture. Joel Osteen is a kid, and that man That's is crazy. his father. Isn't that interesting? That's Joel and his dad. So now think of this text. Now, now I'm not trying to you know, promote Joel Osteen as this perfect guy and his family as a perfect family, but I, I really like this example. Uh, whatever you've heard, learned, received, um, or, or seen in me, and you hear Joel Osteen talk about his dad a lot, and if you listen to his messages, he refers to his dad a lot. Yeah. Because Joel Osteen never had a desire to be a pastor, ever. Never had a desire to be a quote-unquote minister, ever. His dad was very, he was more on the traditional route. His dad's preaching style was even more of like a Baptist, guttural kind of, yeah. you know, preaching, fire preaching style, right? Whereas Joel just kind of tells stories. And so, so, I mean, just him coming up to speak, that, that was not his vibe. That's not his lane. Joel was behind the camera and took great pride. He says it all the time. I took great pride. He said, I would pick out my dad's clothes when, before. So I would go to his house and pick out his clothes and, because I, I know what colors would look good on the screen. And I, yeah. I know what the contrast should be. And I would tell him where to stand. And I, I knew where the cameras were. And he worked the production from the time the church was small to the time the church got bigger. He was behind the whole media scene. That's why the television ministry they have now is, is so great. But he was behind all of that. And that was his passion, his love. All he wanted to do is just, just make his dad look good. But, but it's interesting because Joel Osteen now is learning and receiving from his dad. So what's the difference between learning and receiving? Learning, you can sit and you can take notes and you can learn a concept, mm -hmm. right? You, you can go to a class and you can learn how to do a math problem. Or you can learn how to do whatever concept you might learn in a training, a work training, job training, whatever, right. and you learn a concept. Receiving something means you catch it. 
right? You've, you've heard of, of taught versus caught. Like, I, I, I was taught this, but I caught this, and this is something I'll never forget, yeah. right? It's something that resonates with your heart. It resonates with you, and you never forget it. Those are those kinds of things. And how many things are, are, do we catch? Things you heard about. So not only do I learn from a person, not only do I receive, meaning I catch what they're, what they're giving, what, what, what the learning is or what they're teaching, but then I hear about what's their reputation that I hear about them. And am I hearing about the person? What am I hearing about them? And what am I seeing? So, so seeing, being observed in, all the things that I'm seeing in an individual. And I put this as, as, a, as, an, exemp, as an example of someone who's looking at his dad. His dad was his example. And he talks about him today. I said, what are some of your thoughts about that? Um, one of the biggest things that I think that was caught was Jesus. Yep. It's not the style. That whole family, It's yep. not the style of how you teach. It's mm -hmm. not the way you do things or the video thing. What he caught was there's a savior. Because mm -hmm. you said their styles were completely different. You look at Charles and Andy Stanley, completely different. Yep. Right. And they had issues, too. Ed they had, they had conflict. Their relationship had some conflict. But yep. what was caught was there is a God. There is a God, and we are going to serve him. Yeah. And it's interesting being around that when you say, no, I, I do catch that, and that turns into a passion that you embrace. Like you yeah. said, it's not just something that I learned the, the scriptures. I embrace those scriptures. Yeah. I embrace that Savior. Yeah. You know, right. and so just when you catch things like um, me and Jada were talking about, you know, Jada loves to read. Mm -hmm. I, I like to read. Yeah. Dad, dad likes, loves dad to read. Dad likes yeah. to read. Yeah. Dad didn't say go read. Yeah. You just watch a man reading book after book and then talking about his books. And I can read my books and talk to him about it. Jada, and oh my God, she's reading three books a week now, but yes. just reading and reading yeah. and just, but just that is a thing that you catch because mm -hmm. you're around it and you see. Now, of course, you can catch other things too that are really bad. <laughs> right. So it's just interesting what you catch when you're around people yeah. and, the, and the habits and the ways and the, the thinking and everything because you're just in the environment of mm -hmm. it. So the yep. environment, but the biggest thing to catch is is did did was Jesus contagious? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you talk about catching things from dad. I caught financial wisdom through dad. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because dad now you told me stories and I could be wrong and dad's right here. But 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 dad never sat down and said, Okay, Angel, now here's how you do a budget and here's he, how you handle your men. This is what credit means and this is what no, a score means. No. But but somehow you would always say, Hey, we, we got you gotta make sure you pay your stuff. You gotta be on time. You gotta you know, you got to get your stuff together because that's, that's a just, Johnson that's just trait. Handle your business. Handle your business. <laughs> and so, so interestingly, I wasn't born into this family. I was grafted in by love, and now I'm claiming it, and they can't get rid of me now. But, but now that, so that came through to me, and so now I'm, it's interesting. I kind of took that mantle and trying to do my best to do that. And so now the, so, so Jared will, will kind of, kind of ask, but not really. Um, and then Jada will kind of look to me for those things sometimes, you know, every now and then. So that's really cool. That was a that was something that that was caught. Matt, Pastor Matt, what you think? Yeah, I think um, you know a difference between knowing and, and doing. Yeah, would be the difference between you know, kind of well, learning or knowing. Yeah, you yeah. Know, if you learn it, then I think you're you're adding in the the putting into practice. Of, right. Uh, it's not just something that you are, you're not taking, you're not riding on somebody's coattails from it. You're actively applying it yourself. And exactly. the, the first thing that comes to mind is, to me, one of the most terrifying accounts in the entire Bible. I remember the first time I read it, I was like, I never want that to happen to me. Was, uh, y'all remember when, um, when that dude tried to cast a demon out? Oh, yeah. In the name of Jesus, of whom Paul preaches. The, se the seven sons of Sceva. Y'all remember that? Yeah. I read that. I remember the yeah. first time I read it. And, and it says that the, that the demon looked at him. <laughs> yes. And I was like, well, I don't like this. <laughs> right. I don't like where this is headed. <laughs> and he said, Jesus I know, mm -hmm. and Paul I know, but who are you? Yeah. And I remember reading that going, oh, my goodness, Lord Jesus, who am I? Please don't ever let this. Lord God, please. Who, can you, Lord, please, can you? Can I know you, please? Because I never want this, please, please. Right. Because there's and, a and difference they, between. And then beat him out of his beat, clothes. They beat him up. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they beat it. It's, that's a different kind of beating when you get beat naked. Get like beat. When, when you're clothed before the beating and then all of a sudden you just got beat out of your clothes. You that's different. Beat naked. Um, but, but this idea, though, of um, uh, I, I cannot, you can't, you're not going to get to heaven because of my relationship with Jesus. Right, right. And in, in the same way that y unless you learn yep. these things, unless you put into practice these things. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Javon. 
cool how Elisha and Elijah, Elisha followed him around yep. and got trained and got mentored. But even to the very end, Elijah's like, look, if you want some of what I got, you got to keep your eye on me when mm-hmm. I get caught. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like paying so close attention that you're trying to make sure you catch every nook and cranny yeah. of whoever it is that you're learning from. Yep. And um, they always say kids are watching when you're not. Yep. And that reminds me of that because they get pieces of your mantle. Some they want, mm-hmm. some they don't. Mm-hmm. A lot of us spend our teenage years promising ourselves that we won't be like our parents. Yep. And find ourselves doing some of the Just same like exact that. stuff. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we and I, I'm still like have this thing with my mom or she'll call me and, and I'll be like, I'm mad at you, you know, and like I'm joking, but I'm not. I'm like, I, I was acting like you earlier. And she laughs now. But um, before, it was a thing where you you really do internalize a lot. So mm-hmm. when we fast forward into today, being in community with the right people, yes. mm-hmm. whether you understand everything they're saying right now, whether you can catch their whole thing, you'll be surprised of how much of what they do and yep. say and minister will rub off on you, yep. whether you feel like you're there or not. Yep. And you'll begin to reflect those people that you watch. Yeah. That's you know, one of the stuff. things was Rob Bell. Is that his name? Yeah. And he that's had, who I and he had the video talking. called Dust. Yes. Oh, that's a And great. so that makes me think yes. about what you were saying because he had these little short videos and, you know, don't go into his life. There's struggles there. But he had some amazing Christian videos. There were many teaching. short ones. And one was called Dust and talked about yep. um, the Pharisees. Walking in the dust the Walking of the in the rabbi. dust of your teacher. Because they said your feet should have the dust of your of teacher. Of your rabbi. Yep. Of your rabbi. And the only reason the dust can get on your feet of your rabbi is because you're so closely walking behind that, that teacher. Close. That was so that was so powerful. And that whole idea of the you went to it, the environment that you're in, what I guess the question would be is what dust is on you? Yeah. Who or Come I should say now. this, whose dust is on you? <laughs> Come on now. Because it says, follow me as I follow Christ. Yeah. So are you following people who follow Christ and that's the dust that's on you? Or are you following somebody who's taking you in another direction? And it'll be manifest. It'll, it'll show itself. It'll bear, it, bear what, itself out. What, what, see, I, I got, a, I got a, a sermon title or a book title on that one. What, what's on your shoes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> is it dust or is it dung? Where are you following? Who are you, who are you walking by? You know, That's a good one, though. Who's, whose dust is on you? That's what's the that? Book, Be on the lookout. <laughs> that's, that's good stuff, Angel. I like that. Chat. Uh, Andre, oh, let's see. Chicken Scratch, Pastor Matt over here, I think. We have a skewed view of peace. We view it more like a gift than a grind. Sometimes mm-hmm. peace takes grinding, yes. meaning going against what's easiest for you now for what's best later. Yeah. That's crucial because patience good. kills us when we don't have patience. Yep, and that's good. On Pastor Andrea says, I have caught the love of worshiping God by watching my dad crying and worshiping God. Mm. Yes. Lala said, that's good, Pastor Angel. And, I'm, and I want to go back to what Pastor Dre just said. Me, I'm sorry, Dad. We hate to do this to you, but just as a I, kid, I don't hate it. As a kid, grow, as a kid, <laughs> I love hearing about it. As it was well, a kid, Dad's back there dying. <laughs> as a kid growing up, you know, and I'm like in junior high, high or let's see, high school now. Walking by the door, it's cracked, and he's on his knees praying for his regular prayers for himself at night on the side of his bed, which you think a kid does. And I'm watching my grown father on his knees praying, or you know, I'm watching him live his life for God in such a way. It's like that's an, without one word said, mm-hmm. without doing it for display. Mm-hmm. The image of what it means to have a humble heart to say, I bow down, not because I'm with my wife in this devotion time. Right. It's my walk with him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's an good. impact on yes. me, at least. So That's good. Anybody else? Thoughts, comments, anything? We're good? All right. So here's the question. So the question is, from whom do you learn, receive, hear, and observe in faith? Because, again, a lot of us have mentors and things like that. But in faith, from whom do you learn, receive, hear? And, and, and by the way, you don't have to put any names in the chat. This is just a reflective question. You can if you want to. But from whom do you learn, receive, hear, and observe in faith? And second, why is this challenging for people to learn, receive, hear, and observe in faith? Why is that challenging for people? Thoughts? Go ahead. Go, Go ahead, Jova. Being around you. For the last two years has helped me tremendously when it comes to, I don't know if it's the, 
the elevation that God is like giving me to be in these different spaces, but people just be saying whatever they want to me for the last like two years, three years, like whatever, like before they wouldn't say that because maybe they wouldn't know what I would do or how I would react. But it seems like in, I've, I just, man, in this city, people of esteem, people of low esteem, people of high, they say some crazy stuff out of nowhere and hanging around you for when I would say crazy things to you and you would just kind of be like, I hear you, man. And, I, and now, I guess that's so funny because your face never changes. You're like, I hear you. And I'm like, wow, he's really, he's really cool about this. And now I'm noticing that when I'm in these spaces and somebody says something wild, I'm like, okay, okay, I feel you. <laughs> but I really, you know, in the, in the past, I would have been like, what? And it would have been on maybe, but now I'm learning so much from you just about like, it's not the end of the world to, for somebody to have an opinion or to feel away. It's no need to fight and get mad. And so that's helping me a lot. It used to be challenging, but now that I'm seeing the results of it, I want to keep it going. That's yeah. very cool. Like Bless it. you, man. God is, God is good. Other, other thoughts on this? Um, I would say the generic answer is everyone because I glean off everyone. Yep. So when I'm, at, when I'm at group with the women, yep. you know, I'm gleaning off what they're saying because I know it's reciprocal, you know. But I also have intentional people that I listen to, that I intentionally put mm -hmm. in place to mm -hmm. pour into me. Mm -hmm. And um, one, you know, was a pastor herself, mm -hmm. and the other one's actually a f um, friend that's also a, ther a Christian therapist. Mm -hmm. So I purposely meet with them once a month for the intentional pour in, but I glean off of, of everyone just to see what, what God is speaking through people, mm -hmm. through Jada, through you, I mean, not just through you, but through everybody. I'm very sensitive to it. Mm -hmm. But like I said, and then of course, uh, Jennifer, but it, so it's, and that's like quarter or, you know, once every so often, but it's intentional people in place mm -hmm. that I know I need to, I need to, I need to hear, but observing is not something that's more than like receiving and hearing and being taught. That's intentional. Observing is all the time. Yeah. So I'm observing all the time to say, what am I picking off of what they just said and right. did? I'm always right. listening and watching. Mm -hmm. But there's an intentional part to it to be taught, like yeah. being having the dust on my feet. Yeah. And, yeah. and why is it challenging? Because people like me um, are very harsh on other people and look for perfection. Mm -hmm. So I can glean off of somebody, but the minute they make a mistake or I feel like there's a fault in their character, yep. it's like, Psh, I can't, Cut you know, them off. whatever. And so there's no one perfect. We're all human. Mm -hmm. And so I've learned to just accept people and say, you know what, they, they struggle in this area, but I surely can glean over here. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's, it's challenging because, and it's also challenging for some of people because it's a sca scapegoat, I think, or a cop-out to say, to write off people that just so I don't have to be held accountable. Right. Yep. I don't have to be taught. I don't have to yep. learn. I don't have to sit underneath anybody. I don't need to have authority. I don't need to observe because everybody's a mess. And so why am I even sitting with you? Yep. So that's a cop out so I can live my own raggedy life, basically. Yeah, no, that's good. Pastor Matt. Yeah, no, I would, I would, definitely, um, I would definitely echo those sentiments. I think that um, it's especially as it pertains to, you know, the faith, uh, people, um, people sometimes because they they can be so harsh and it and it can be very very easy that the, the uh, I once said the seat of the Pharisee is more comfortable than the sandal of a disciple mm. and so it can be can you easier. say that can you say that again the seat of the Pharisee is is more comfortable than the sandal of the disciple mm. right and 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 it's so much easier all that means is that it's so much easier than you would think to fall into that line of mm -hmm. thinking and mm -hmm. and that line of like I'm an, I'm judging this person harshly and all this stuff and it and it really almost seems like um, you think that you you think that you are above that. You think that you're you think that you're sitting down and eating meat, but truly, what's happening is you you never learned how to eat the meat and spit out the bone, and because it's not milk, you choke on it, mm. and and so that's a problem for yep. I think a lot of people in the faith, and, and it's challenging yep. uh, because people just don't want to. You know, in this day and age, people just I just don't want to, and uh, and so like um, I think you know the five the five biggest hurdles um challenging the the, the church community or, you know um, we can make it about the things that the world tries to identify as the biggest issues of the world but i i, I would submit to you that their laziness selfishness apathy ignorance and uh, disunity mm -hmm. i think those are the five I, I don't think that it's the things that we get so bogged down with and that we allow us to, mm -hmm. to, to it's, it's nothing internal. on the outside 
Yes. And we get caught up on all of the stuff that's on the outside right. Yep. Right. as opposed to looking inward. Yeah, that's really good. Yep. Jared, can you text that to me? Can you text that quote to me? The, the seat of the Pharisee is more comfortable than the sandal of the disciple. That's, man. Yeah, it's, I, it's internal. I, I'm, I'm, I'm chewing on that one. <laughs> that's, and everything else you said was good, too. That one is yeah, like, no, I like what you said. man, that's some good stuff. Thank you. That's and I'll up. also add to what Javon said just real quick. I'm not trying to take all the time. No, no, no. Just no, real take, quick. Um, I, I, have, I have the pleasure of sitting at tables I have no business sitting at. I, I have no business sitting with, with some of the, the people that I get to you know, have conversations with and, and friendships with and relationships with and, and to be mentored by. And one of the greatest friendships that I've been able to have this last year, consider this, a memory just came up. Uh, and so this time last year, we were still in a gym. I did not even know you. Wow. wow. This time last year. Yep. I did not even know who you were. Mm -hmm. We were probably just getting ready to sit down to a coffee you know, but, but, or maybe we had had a coffee, but mm -hmm. did not know each other. And, and I've told you many times before, you know, I never asked, I wasn't, I told God, I wasn't even looking for a friend and he brought me a brother. He yeah. brought me somebody who was kingdom minded to walk alongside. And I will say, speaking to what Jovan was speaking to specifically, God has given you an extra special measure of grace. He really has, because there are times where I, I will be, I'll be fit to be tied. I'll be done with something. I'm like, we need to be done with this. We, sh <laughs> we should probably be done now. And, and you'll be like, Let's watch. Let's wait. And I'm like, we don't know. Let's not wait. What if we didn't wait? And you're like, <laughs> let's just wait. And that's, that's an extra measure of grace that God has given you. And so, yeah, that's all I'll say. Well, amen. Mm -hmm. Bless y'all. So you're about to make me get all misty up in here. <laughs> no, don't make me Go cry. <laughs> don't make me cry. He's got a towel. He'll be fine. Someone has a mic over here. Go ahead, Valerie. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Oh, I have a variety of people that I actually learn from and receive and hear and observe in faith. I would say my mom, uh, being raised by her as a child and remembering her quotes and Bible verses that have affected me in my life have been so powerful that I take them on all my life. And now with her being here with me as well as a wonderful mom, I think I'm even growing even more. Uh, in addition to that, all of my pastors, including you, Pastor and Angel, have had a profound effect on me in a positive way that I just love so much. And, and when, you, when you know that you're receiving from them, you're not only hearing it, but you are also being a doer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the richness of when someone has an effect on you. I also have the TV ministers like you guys do. I'm a fan of uh, Rick Warren, I'm a friend of, uh, fan of Osteen, mm -hmm. because I have seen not only applying it, but seeing action and things that have changed in my life as a, as a, re as a, um, as a reward of doing the word. And mm -hmm. I think that's so important. And what I find, I think why people find it challenging um, in some cases is that, <sighs> Either they're not ready to receive, they'll hear it, but it's not in their spirit or soul to the extent where they want to change. Mm -hmm. And I think when they're don't, not ready for change, then they don't see the positive effects of the being a doer of the word of God and allowing it to manifest in their lives in a possible way. Yeah. So overall, I just think that um, we as individuals can learn from so many people, not just the church, but other Christians yeah. as well, that are an example for us in our lives to change and have those conversations, which are rich. And it opens up doorways for us to not only have that confidence, but begin to be that role model for someone else. Yeah, Amen. no, that's really good. So, so when, and when I think of, um, I'll say this real quickly and we can move on. When, when I just think of, you know, going back through my life, some of those, some of those sparkles of, of, of those leaders and those kinds of people, you know, I, I think of, um, you know, Pastor Jones, mm -hmm. um, Pastor Horatio Jones. And I remember being in college, Angel invited me to church. I, you know, I kind of knew there was a God out there, but I wasn't really into faith or anything like that. She took me to church. There's this young pastor and that dude can teach to this day. If you hear him teach, that dude can teach the Bible in such a way it makes you want to go. That's in the Bible. It makes you want to go back and read. He excites you 
about going back to the Word, and that's one thing I never forgot about that. He teaches in just such a way, and he'll tell the story around it, and he, he's an expository preacher, so he's talking in the text, and I'm like, that's, I got to read that. That's, that's pretty cool. I got to read that, but he just had that richness, and then when I look at pastors coming through, you know, leaving him and going to Pastor Kerwin Manning, and Kerwin Manning was just a different kind of dude. He was, you know, he was like, I went from a place where you wore the suits. I mean, the long, you know what I'm talking about, the suits with the bell bottoms and the gaiters. And exactly, exactly. I, went, I went from that kind of look, and I was, I was actually moving in that direction. You should have seen my wardrobe back then. Angel hated it, but I had the, I had the two-tones, Pastor Matt, the two-tone oh, yeah. shoes. Oh, yeah. yeah, I had some of those. I had, I had the two-tone shoes. I was killing it. Killing it back in the day. With the eight buttons? You know, yep, the suit with the long butt. And I had one that almost looked like a little, you know, looked like the Matrix and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, so you went from that to Kerwin Manning. That dude wore a polo shirt, and like, like he was about to go out and play golf. And, and he was just so just down to earth. It's like, what should we call you? Bishop? Elder? Pastor? Like, my name is Kerwin. <laughs> like, well, we can't call you that. We got to call you something. And that's where I got this whole concept. Just call me Dwayne. Yeah. But just being down to earth, just being another, I'm, I'm with you on this one, just being in that space. I learned that from him. I learned from him to just stay calm. Just, just you know, you. I'll, I'll never forget one, one time when mom and dad came to visit the church for the first time and they're coming to see us at our new church and they show up and the power went out. And I'm like, man, the power's out. It's like, this is, we're, we're trying to put our best foot forward for our right. parents, right? And we're sitting in the dark. And so next thing you know, we're in the office getting ready to pray. And I'm on the pastoral staff. And we're, and we're circling up, getting ready to pray and start church. And, and Pastor Kerwin walks in. And he says, all right, let's praise the Lord, whatever. Okay, let's pray. It's like, are we going to address the fact that the power's out? <laughs> and somebody came in. And he said, oh, just call it. You know, did you call the power? Yeah, we called. Okay, that's fine. All right, let's pray. And he prayed. And we walked in. I'm like, are we going to change the game plan? The band is sitting in there, and there's no power, so they can't play. They're just sitting on the instruments. And he walks in, and he's a worship pastor. He's like you. He's a worship pastor. Yep. So he comes in. He says, good morning, everybody. Right. And he just starts singing. And everybody said, oh, I guess it's okay to sing. So we just start clapping our hands. Dad, I don't know if you remember that. And we just start singing. And we're singing, and we everybody's all good. And they opened up the windows to get some light in the building, and it was all good, and then the power comes on. And that, I never forgot that lesson of just, God is here, and it's all good. I mean, I just never, so, so these lessons you learn from these leaders that you see, and even, even I'll, I'll give a shout out to, to uh, Pastor Alfred at St. John. I, the, the, just walking in this line of integrity, family integrity, and just walking in that space was so important and was very rarely stated. And, you know, decisions may be here or there. You may have leadership things that you may not like or whatever, but, but you, you can never question the morality. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I never saw that emphasized by a pastor in such a way that you, you can question my cause. You may not even like me as a person, but you're never going to question my morality. And that is something that was so upright and meant so much. So I have so many that, that I got from that. Go ahead, Pastor Matt. No, I was just reminded of, of again, you, you had the opportunity. And you, because you saw that, because of what Pastor Kerwin did, you had then the opportunity to, to put it into it. practice. Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't know if everybody remembers this, but y'all remember when the power went out? Yep. Last <laughs> year. <laughs> right before church, the power was out. We were like, hey, we have a... Uh, we have no power. <laughs> <laughs> right. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to have church. Mm -hmm. And we're going to worship. We're mm -hmm. going to worship. And guess what? They, 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 they didn't have power back in the day. Right. So yeah. we, we, can, right. we can still, Holy, we can still have Holy church. Holy Spirit power. Yeah, yep. we can still have church. It's fine. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and, and I got that from Kerwin. So that takes us to our next one. Oh, you want to go to chat? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Chat. Okay, let's see. Because that was a great transition to our next stage. Mama Dina says, initially, definitely my mom. Mm. And then um, Andrea says, I glean off Angel in our one-on-one -on -one conversations, sharing life and learning through life lessons together. Alicia says, the seat of Pharisees is more comfortable than the sandal of the disciple, which mm -hmm. you said. And then yep. she said, yes, Miss Val, and amen to morality. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. So now, the first stage, and we spent some time on that one, the first stage is possession. Uh, and that's the first stage. Of the, that's the foundational piece. If, if we're going to achieve peace, 
we have to have somewhere that we're receiving, learning, watching, and, and obtaining some things to be able to do that. Here's the second stage is practice. Can you say practice? Practice. Allen Iverson, can we say practice? All right. This says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, we said that part, now put it into practice. Put it into practice. Pastor Matt just said that. I learned something back in the day. We put it into practice, and there are a number of things learned that we put into practice here. Yep. Um, I, I forgot uh, Darren Barron, Pastor Darren Barron. Uh, Pastor Barron is like, you know, act right now like the church you want to be. And he said that from the beginning. And so when we're sitting in the little office, <laughs> and it's just an office, it was Angel's office that we got for her to do her ministry and her counseling and all that. That's where we started the church. And it was me, Angel, Jared, Jada, and Yvette who came by the house today. And, and it was just the five of us sitting there. I, I kid you not, I printed out bulletins. And set them in the chairs. I had the PowerPoint projector aimed to the wall, and I had a little slideshow in there, and we had the little CD player, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we put on Israel, or put on whoever else, and played the CD, and we sang, and we had an order of service, and we did the whole thing with just five people in the room. And you might say, why are you, you know, why are you so serious about this? Because I, we were already planning. So when we walked into a bigger space, we were already doing it. And as each space got bigger, we were already doing it. It, was, it wasn't new at <laughs> all. Go ahead. We're like, um, what's that movie with Steve Martin, The Jerk? Yeah. I'm sorry, it's off. Like he had the little cabin. <laughs> and at the very end, he had the same cabin, but it was just bigger. Right. I'm not right. saying we're right. a cabin or a shack. Right. Right. But the point is, it's like same it's, thing. it's the same program. <laughs> right. same. Everything's exactly the same as yep. the office as it is now. Yeah, it's the, it's the same. Yep. It's that movie the same. was funny. It's the same. So, so, so practice. If you think about practice, I want to show you a picture now, and we don't have to talk a whole lot about this picture. So for those who can't see it, here's Joel Osteen. We showed the one where he was a kid with his dad. Now he's grown up on the stage, and he's doing his ministry. It's not about how many people. It's not about, yes, this is one of the largest churches in America. Uh, when you say in the world, when you say, wouldn't it be the largest in the world? There are churches in the world that have hundreds of thousands of people yep. at a service. Yep. <laughs> You go to some place in Africa, my, my spiritual father told me, this Larry Titus, he was like, oh, no, we, we, we go to Africa, and you can go to a place where they have 100,000 people in the audience. It's like, what? What is that? Yeah. So, yeah, so that, that's, we, don't, we don't know what, yeah, that's, that's right. mega, mega. The whole community is coming. But, but anyway, so you talk about him and what he's doing. He's now in his element. Remember, he didn't ask for this. He didn't want this. He didn't want to do this. But the things he learned from his dad, he did. And one of the things I like about Joel's story is that I didn't know how to pastor. I didn't know how to preach. I didn't know how to do any of it. I didn't go to school. I didn't go to seminary. And he, you know, all, all these all these kind of things that you would say, how does one get groomed? I would imagine, Pastor Matt. Yes, sir. I would imagine that when John Osteen passed away and got sick, I would bet there was somebody in that community that thought they should be the next pastor. 100%. 100%. And probably went to school probably was trained, probably was all that, who thought they should be the next pastor. And I would probably imagine, Sister Valerie, I would probably imagine that there were a contingent of people in the audience who thought that there was an individual who should have been the next pastor. Yep. And here comes Joel, right? No training, never preached, never done the ministry to do a traditional church-style ministry. And here comes Joel. And so Joel says all the time, the only thing that led me was grace because I had to just be me and I just had to do what I do and be who I am. And people left, people did all kinds of things, but he had to just be me. So putting into practice, practice literally means, it, it, it's, it's, I, I did a literal thing, but just to make it more simple, it, it's to rehearse and repeat. It's just rehearse and repeat, rehearse, repeat, rehearse, repeat. Whether you're doing an instrument, whether you're doing something for your job, whether you're doing homework. With that, by the way, did you know that's the purpose of homework? I know we have some educators in the room. The purpose of homework is to, here's the concept we're teaching right. you. Now you're going to go home and practice it, practice it, practice it, practice it. That's the point of homework because you're practicing concepts. But we don't always treat faith that way. That, okay, here's a concept. Let me practice it all week long. I've learned. Here's Sunday. Okay, let me take Sunday, and I'm going to work on it all week long. I'm going to take this and take these principles and points, and we're just going to work and practice, 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 and repeat. That, that's something by faith I think we can all be challenged to do. 
wherever, wherever we're getting this word. Because sometimes we'll get a word, which is all good, and we get encouraged by it or inspired by it. It's like, I needed that word today. That was good. And we got the inspiration, but it's not being put into practice, right? And so, so that's that. It also implies that one actually follows the teaching, <laughs> right? right? So practice means that you're actually doing what was taught. If anybody's ever played sports and you do practice, you practice the same thing over and over again. How many of you like sports? Like if you see it on TV or if you see it in person or anything like that, you like sports. How many of you have ever been to a practice? You ever watch the practice? It is boring. It is boring. It is boring. Unless you're, unless you're watching like live action if they're doing scrimmaging. But if you're watching like, because again, scrimmaging only happens during a certain point of practice. Otherwise, they're doing drills. Yeah, they're, the they're, they're like, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're doing all kind of things on the side. And if you ever went to a practice, like even if you go to like the NFL mini camp, training camps and all that, they're waiting to see the action. But, but you see in a lot of warm-ups, a lot of drills, whatever, and you'll be saying, hey, when's the action going to start? But the practice is the action to the player. Right. That is the action. Right? So, so when, you, when you're seeing, like, you know, basketball, and I, I wasn't, I didn't play organized basketball, but, but, but I would watch the practices, and when you see them holding, like, back in the day, it was a broom, and now they have, like, sticks or whatever, and you know, and they're seeing, and, and you have to shoot over that stuff, whatever. That that is the the part, and you don't feel like it's exciting. I ran track, so every, we all we did was run. <laughs> that's that's it. We just ran different distances at different rates, but it was just running. But I mean, but that is it. That's 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 where it all happens right there. So when you get in the game, it's like fluid. It's natural. It's more mental, but the physical, you just not you you're not getting in shape during the game. You're not getting in shape during the competition. Right. All that stuff has happened already because I've already worked it out. When it's game time, we're ready to go. And now I'm just trying to figure out which way I'm going and how we're doing it. My body knows what to do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If I've studied for a test, right, and I've studied, when I get to the test, I'm just looking at what configuration the question is being asked because I've already put the practice in and I'll recognize it when it comes. Amen. Yep, amen. So practice means that I'm doing this because I've learned something in concepts and in theory. I've caught it and said, oh, that's a good word. But now I'm practicing it out and working it out. And as I'm working it out, I'm getting ready for something that I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes. But, but what are your thoughts about all these things? Um, I would say that it reminds me of wax on, wax off. Yes. I almost used that as my example you today, know. Angel. And so, you know, with the karate kid. The movie Karate and I think Kid. That, I think that, you know, when he was doing the wax on, wax off, that move over and over again, that when it came time to the fight, that was just a natural move. So for those who don't know, because you have some that are watching that don't know the... Well, they don't the, know, then the shame well, on Well, they it. don't know the original no, karate. I know. The original Karate Kid, the, the, said, the guy said, come over and watch. I want to learn how to do karate. He said, cool, wash my car. <laughs> no, this for, and he says, wax on, wax off. And he taught him how to do that, and that turned into move. In the... In the Jaden Smith version, the more modern version of Karate Kid, he had to hang his coat. It's like, hang your coat, now take it down. Hang your coat, take it down. And so, but the, what you're trying to say is you keep doing repetitive and motions And what I was going to say about it is that it really makes me think of how important it is. The scripture says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if I'm talking about training and practice, I have to renew my mind and my thinking. Yep. And the only way I do that is through the Word of God. But if I'm not reading the Word of God, my mind is still very worldly and fleshly. Right. And I'm living off what we talked about in group battery life. I'm not plugged into the source. I'm going off what I learned in the past, and it's a matter of time before that, that laptop dies. Wow, that's really good. And so I think yeah. that... Y'all are dropping some nuggets tonight, man. I, I, I'm living off battery life. I've never heard you say that like that before. Oh. That's really good. That's really good. So, yeah. Javon <laughs> so said you spitting bars right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's been said like before. That is really good. Not by me. But I think that I think though that um, so I think that as we memorize scripture and we meditate and we hide it in our hearts and then we speak it, we speak it to the lie that we are going against. We speak the scripture over what's happening. We speak truth like when Satan came to tempt Jesus with scripture, Jesus responded with scripture. Yes. He knew the word because he hid it in his yes. heart. Yes. Not only do you speak scripture, you, you act out scripture. So therefore... Um, you know what to act it out, and you have community, which is what we're learning in our 
you know, group on Monday yep. is the word and community. It's the right. word and community. Right. So therefore, there's somebody there to say, hey, um, that is that what's going on? In other words, I speak truth too. Right. Right. So I have people speaking truth to me. I'm also speaking truth out my mouth, and all of that causes a transformation of how I live and act. Yes. But if I don't allow people the permission to get close enough to me to say, can I talk to you privately? What's, you yeah. seem a little angry. You seem a certain way. Can I talk? If I don't allow people to be, to, if I'm not teachable or correctable, right. and I don't let people close enough to do that, and it's just this far away preaching and teaching thing, but no right. one can get close enough to me to say, can I talk to you? then you're not talking about transformation. Right. So I just think that when you're talking about the, pra the practices, I let people get close. The practices, I speak. I speak the word. Right. The practices, I'm in the word. I mean, so it's just all these things. Like, what am I practicing? Right. And I like how you say with the people. So if, as, as we're using uh, Pastor Joel as, a, as our exemplar, um, and again, we're not lifting him up as one who doesn't make mistakes, whatever that, but it's just as the exemplar of one who, who learned something, is following something, is that as you see him, he could have easily, camera was his ministry. Mm -hmm. He could have easily eventually said, somebody else take over the church. This isn't for me. And he could have started a TV ministry with just him behind a camera. Right? And that, he could have easily done something. That was his niche. That was his comfort level. That's what he could have done. But he engaged and continued to engage the people. And so the people is an important aspect. Uh, Pastor Matt, Javon, anything? I think that, um, I think what this, what this particular thing comes down to uh, because what we're considering is what we learn. Let's let's take it and put it into practicum as it pertains yep. to church, as it pertains to church, as it pertains to the Christian lifestyle. So we would come to church on a Sunday, and we would be taught a lesson, right? We would receive a lesson, and then our our motive should be to go home then and practice said lesson, right? So I think that the 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 biggest challenge here is that people come to church. Um, this is where the James Bond method needs to kick in. Okay, so why do you come to church? Do you come to church to be stirred mm -hmm. or to be shaken? <laughs> because there's That's a difference funny. between being stirred up that is funny. and being shaken. I've, I, and listen, I come to church to be shaken. I said, God, I want you to shake me. When something is shaken, it, it is to the core. Yeah. You are shaken to the place to where I need this. I, 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 I'm not going to be the same again. Yes. Right. What's stirred will eventually settle. Mm. And we have a lot of people that attend churches that go to get stirred up. And then they settle for a settle. life that's yes. less than yes. what they should have, and what they're supposed to, and what they're called to do. Yeah. So it's not just coming to get something like, oh, I got mine, and now I'm going to live for me. It's, it it changes you to go be the life to, to be the changing agent yeah. out there. Yeah. Not that's stirred, good. so I can come and say, I got. And I won't say what they used to say at other conferences, but I got my pleasure. Yeah. I got my yeah. spiritual pleasure on, and my experience, and my my sensationalism, right. and that felt good, and. And if I don't get that, then church was bad. It's that's like, no, what I'm coming is. to right. right. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly what it right. is. And it happens you know, in hiding, too. Yeah. You can't be discouraged in secret. I remember I decided to be a professional piano player in 2009. I practiced for 17 hours a day, mm. literally, nonstop. That's all I did for three years straight 2019 11 i even have a job i don't even know how mate anyway I was, I, I, I was like taking gigs and like working at local spots but all i did was play i didn't even go anywhere at this time it was before i started doing music it was before i started coming out and it seemed as if when i finally came out that i had come out of nowhere mm. and mm. i didn't feel like i was good and often in training camp you get an idea of how good the team is going to be once the season starts but nobody right. knows yet Right. So you're trying to tell people, hey, I'm, we're good, we're real, but right. you're not going to find out till way later. Right. And I think about that in 2009 and 2022 where I don't even have to think about expressing myself on the instrument. And I translate that over to the kingdom because there's things that we're trying to do now that we're struggling with. Mm -hmm. We're trying to control our mouth, but we're struggling with it. We're trying to control our emotions, but we're struggling with it. So we think we're not succeeding. Right. But if we were to keep to do it, Right. The Lord is going to express our efforts openly later on when we're not even thinking about yes, what yes, we're doing if yes. we just stay with it now. Right, right. That, that is the ministry. Stay in the word, yes. That, that is the ministry. The struggle is the ministry. That's the work. That's really good. So let me, let me hit this one word, and then we'll go to the chat. Um, I put this word in here, heuristic. Can you say heuristic? Heuristic. heuristic. Okay, so heuristic. I'll, I'll do this in a real, as, as simple as a way that I, that I can that I can do it because it's kind of. A, it took me a long time to understand this word. The heuristic is when one receives 
knowledge, but then further knowledge is gained from it. Does that make sense? That means I got this, but man, it inspired this, and now I have this whole new thing that came from it. So, so, so in part of our practice, what we're doing is we're taking, I'll take something Pastor Matt said, and it hits my heart, and I'll remember it, but something new will arise that I'll create because I'm walking in Christ. Yep. Does that make sense? Mm. And that's where the uniqueness of me and my giftedness comes in through my practicing working out my faith in fear and trembling. But that, that comes out to me working out my faith. It, and so sometimes we're like, well, what am I supposed to do? Well, just keep working. Just keep working. God's going to reveal something to you. He's going to reveal a space to you. And this space is going to be revealed as you're working, this new thing that came out of this thing. And it turns out that you're not that person. God used that person to shake you up, like Matt said, to inspire something new in you that you create. And then someone watches you and goes, I didn't know you could even do this at church. I didn't know that this was possible to do in this way. Because Jovan, if you see him play the key, a lot of keyboard players, but not too many play like Jovan. Right? And I'm not talking about the skill level. No, you have a lot of skilled musicians in the world. But there's a, there's a, there's a passion. There's a, there's a worship. There's a, Duncan has it at, at the Vine. With our Vine family, if you watch him, you can't really see him because the, 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 the booth back here is kind of dark. But you see him, he'll, he'll have his eyes closed. I don't know how you play drums with your eyes closed, but I've watched him. And I've watched him, and I've seen, I've seen him back there doing it. And then I'll see him put his hands up at the end, and he's like, I'm just watching him going in. And I can only imagine wanting to walk in and feel the anointing in this, in this drum booth when he's done. But, I mean, you're, you're seeing something like that. But what is it that's being inspired in you as you take this word, these teachings, these observations, and you put them into practice? Joel Osteen is nothing like John Osteen, 100%. And God took that and elevated that and is literally reaching the world multiple times a day. You can't turn on the television without seeing Joel every day, Right? And again, that's not because he's just some great man. It's because he's following and he's walking and he learned and he's moving and he's walking in his grace and God is using him and all that. But he created something different. What's he creating in I, you? Just let me just so say, me, I know you got to go, but really yeah, quick. And, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, reading in Romans and, and um, Romans was Paul was talking about um, it's not the eloquence. You know, you're not talking about people who have this great speech and this great eloquence and yeah. they're so articulate or they can sing so this... God uses those the most ordinary. Yes. It's like, how on earth is yep. that ministry that huge? Yep. I mean, like, I'm a Rick this Warren. this guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> right. sorry, because I'm a Rick Warren type person. And I watch him preach, and I'm like, how? I mean, <laughs> you know, like Paul, I said, I thought you were going to be like this by the way you wrote. But I, you come up and you speak like this. And you look like this. What the like, heck? Yeah. yeah, what is this? And so when you look up just yeah. the, some of the people, you're like, but God's saying, this is so I get the glory. Yeah, exactly. Not so that you get the glory because yes. you can speak so well or because yes. you can do so. This is not about you and your giftings. It's about how I can use the most ordinary person and then blow things up. Absolutely. Right, and that, that person who is teaching uh, those how to practice must get beyond spectacle. We don't create just for spectacle. Because exactly. if you're up there just to creating just for spectacle, you're just going to create spectators. And we need to get beyond spectators. Yes. 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 Chat real quick. Um, okay. Um, I think Alicia says, amen. Morality, that's huge. Christ-like, I think that's Brother Ryan. What's poppin' LVC family? Lala says, say it, Pastor Angel. Alicia says, it's bigger than you. And yep. then amen. Amen. All right. So now here are questions to consider. And we're just, I'm just going to throw them out and we're going to move on. The questions are, um, why can people do what is learned in other areas of life but find it so difficult to do what is learned in faith? That's a question. And how can we improve in this area? I'll All just right, say so, humility. So here's, Keep going. So here's, so here's step one. So, so remember, stage one is possession, right? Stage two is practice. You can't practice something you never received. Mm -hmm. All right? So now stage two is practice, and you're working it out. Stage three, here's the stage. Here's the promise stage. And by the way, all these stages keep working. You don't just accomplish one in the next. Stage three is promise. Can you say promise? It says, and the peace of God will be with you. Now, I want to show you this picture, and I wish y'all could see this picture as you're watching virtually. But here's a picture, again, Joel Osteen, and it's a picture with him and his son. His son's name is Jonathan. Um, that's, that's the older, Jonathan. 
This is Jonathan graduating from college. There's a picture of, of Joe, Pastor Joel and Jonathan and picture of, um, of, of Victoria and Jonathan, okay? They're side by side. They're, they're two pictures of them with Jonathan at his college graduation, all right? And, 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 he's, and he's holding up, for those who don't know, he's holding up this sign, okay? He's holding up this sign. And here, here's a, here's a is this, this, is, uh, this is a tweet, right? So here's a tweet that comes in. Now, now remember, we're in the, we're in the stage of, of promise. The promise is that God of peace will be with you. Here's Joel, followed his dad, did the ministry, practiced it out. Here's a tweet. And I would imagine Pastor Joel gets these kind of tweets every day. Here's a tweet to Pastor Joel. Why on earth would you use the devil sign? My goodness, a thumbs up would work for you. Or do you have thumbs? So now, I thought, you know, so I had to research this, because I'm like, okay, did, did his son go to like Arizona State, maybe, and they're the sun devils, and that's their sign? I can understand that. He graduated, like from, too, he graduated from the University of Texas. Yeah. Yeah. The University of Texas' mascot is the Longhorns, and this is their sign of, of this is basically like a bull with the horns, yeah. and, they're, and the, thing, the phrase that they say is, hook them. Like hook 'em horn. That's that's their thing for the University of Texas, right. and that's the Texas long. So this is like a bull's head with the long horns on it, and they, and they're saying, why are you using the devil sign? Yeah. It's and, ignorant in the first place because if you could see the picture, you could see he has thumbs. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. exactly. And so so now here's why I picked this picture, and here's why I used him as an example. Is because you can critique somebody's word, you can critique their theology, you can critique. You can critique that, but how do you walk in peace when this kind of stuff is happening to you constantly? Mm -hmm. Misunderstandings, yep. misinterpretations yep. about you. Yep. Somebody saying something about something you said or did or whatever. It's like, that's not at all what I said or meant, or, and it's being characterized. Now, imagine you're on a big stage, and it takes on wheels, right. and now it spreads, and somebody else sees it. Yep, look at him, devil worshiper. Nobody's going to do the research. Nobody's going to do the background. Nobody's going to see what the truth is or whatever, but being blessed. So I, I say this to say this. Even in your celebrations, you will need peace for crap like this. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Even, I mean, this is a celebratory moment, and he opens up his social media and something like that. Even in your celebrations of life, you're going to have to deal with drama. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's celebrations that will bring you drama. Anybody ever got married? I said this at the message. If you ever got married, you ever had a graduation, ever had a celebration that brings family together in a celebratory mode and you found yourself more stressed out about how everything was going to happen and who was going to get along and who's going to cuss who out and is, is this uncle going to get drunk and, and cut up or is this going to happen and am I going to have to manage this and manage that? And I'm supposed to be celebrating right now. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? So, so that's why it's like, the, the, so, so peace isn't this place of, ah, everything's great. Oh, what a beautiful morning. What a beautiful day. That ain't peace. Right. Peace is when you can sleep in a storm. Jesus is in the boat. Jesus in the boat. Peace is when you can sleep during a storm. Peace is when you can get blessed with something and not have to worry about what's going to happen to it now that you have it. I got blessed with a brand new car. I hope nobody steals it. Hope nobody scratches it. Let me park two spaces away so I can keep people from bumping into it. That's not peace. Peace is I got this great job, but now I have imposter syndrome, and I think I'm going to lose it if they find out that I really don't know everything they think I know. Anybody ever been in that space before? Well, no, but like Pastor Rob said to me this week, if God puts you there, nobody can remove you. That's peace. Y'all yeah. know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Peace is I got kids or I got family or I got this going on, and, and it, it seems okay, but I know something's going to happen. I just know it's too good to be true right now. Yep. Things, things, things are just too good. It's, it's too calm. Things are too good. The other shoe is about to drop, and something bad is about to happen. Has anybody ever been in that space before? Yep. Peace is needed in the good times. Peace is needed in the challenges. And that's where that peace is. It's a conditional statement, but we can't have the peace 
unless we have the word, unless we've watched, unless we've seen the models, unless we've seen somebody go this, we've heard, we've learned, we know the word, unless we practice this stuff. And now that when the stuff comes, good, bad, or indifferent, I can learn how to walk in the peace that God has given me. Angel, and then Pastor Matt, and then we'll close. And then Pastor John. Um, I think what you said is the steps that you have are so crucial because, um, you know, I can't stand in peace if it was not God who did it. Right. And if I make any decision oh, that's good. or yeah. I do something and I force that shoe on and say, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, yep. it's Jesus. It's like that was that job, that job, that person, name whatever it is. Yep. If it's not from God and you didn't follow those steps and then you're going to command peace. Yep. You will not have peace no matter how much you try to wrangle that thing. That's right. Romans uh, 15, 13, me and dad were talking about it. And basically, uh, peace is coming from trust. I just trust God, and therefore, I have joy and peace. And therefore, I'm going to practice trusting him. I'm going to practice trusting him. It's like I don't trust him. Practice trusting him. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Right. So I'm practicing trusting. But the first thing before I say I'm putting, I, what am I trusting? I'm trusting in what you said to do. And, and, and if I come across something where it's like, I kind of knew God was saying something, I kind of thought this, and you did anyway, and you're saying, now I want peace, that's going to be very hard to get. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because you did not good. walk underneath that covering. Yep. That's good. Pastor Matt, very good. Yeah, this, the, this, this is more the, the stepsister syndrome uh, when, we, when we allow what other, what other people have or what we even sometimes try to force fit. You know the the, the stepsisters and Cinderella. Right, Cinderella. I don't know if you guys know the mm -hmm. the original. You know the, we all think of the Disney cartoon, but right. in the in the original writings, uh, the stepsisters. Uh, this, I don't mean to be morbid, but this is what happened in the original writings. The stepsisters cut their toes off mm, to try to fit to, to try to fit happen. in the glass slippers. Let's stop stop trying to reach out for glass slippers that don't belong to you. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that glass slipper is not for you. They're pretty bloody. He's got, mm. they, they got God's got a pair of Jordans just for you. Trust me, like he's got a he's got a pair of shoes that's wow. just for you. They're just wow. meant for that's your feet, exact. And 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 how beautiful are the feet of those that carry the gospel. So yeah. don't be cutting toes off right. just because you're trying to make something fit that's outside of God's promise or plan. Man, that's good stuff. Javon. The Lord told me earlier when I was seeking him about a few things personally, and I can share this openly. He said, don't be drunk with junk. Mm. And I said, what does that mean? And he says that we often lose our peace or get frustrated because we're trying to control an action that we haven't prepared ourselves to deal with. We're trying to stop doing something that we've, in, we've become excessive about, and now we want to quit it, but we've already filled ourselves up to the point where we can't do anything about it by the time the action reaches the surface. Mm -hmm. And I have spent a great deal of my life trying to deal with my actions by the time they hit the surface. Mm. God was saying, in order for me to do better in this, I would need to not be drunk with junk and manage excess in every area of my life. Wow, that's good. I mean, I think that that comes here because if we can manage to do that, we wouldn't have to fight for peace when we've already created turmoil. Yeah, that's good. The question I wrote down here to consider was why do people expect the peace of God without engaging in the practices of God? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And for those who are listening, and you just heard that. Why do people expect the peace of God without engaging in the practices of God? Yeah. Anything in the chat before we close? Um, let's see. John. Hello, Pastor John. He says, oh, Andrea says, so, so good. I'm sorry. And then John says, we lose our peace because we doubt that God rules in the kingdom and affairs of men. I'm just thinking of Daniel's few crises. Um, he knew, thus trusted God. Yeah. Um, Alicia says, you can't stand in peace unless it was God who gave it. Don't be drunk with junk. She repeated that. Amen, mm -hmm. Javon. Yeah, good stuff. So, so I'll say this. It won't be on the screen. You can't see it. You can see it in here. Um, achieve it. In all of your achievements in life, follow the example of those who pursue peace through their faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Can somebody say amen? amen? Father, thank you for our time tonight. Thank you for this word. Thank you for all those who, who have contributed tonight. And, and you just brought inspiration. Holy Spirit, thank you for moving uh, through Pastor Angel, through Pastor Javon, Pastor Matt, um, and, and Valerie, and April, and others. Thank you for just moving the way you move. And through those in the chat, um, thank you for, for speaking the way you speak through all of those who contributed tonight. And now, Lord, help us to be doers of your word, not just hearers only. Help us to be a light to this world. 
Help us to practice, practice, practice what we've learned so that, Lord, we can pursue your peace, not just accomplishments, yes. but pursue your peace that others might know the peace of Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you and we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Can we give God praise tonight? God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. And we will see you next time. Amen.